previous video, we created our header and footer templates. Now, we need to create the content that will go between them. In this tutorial, we're going to be working with the index.php file that we started earlier. This is easily the most important template in your theme, so when you're creating your theme, you'll probably find yourself spending a lot of time working on this particular file. This is the file that will act as the home page for your blog, and it will also display all the blog posts in the database, or just a certain amount if you account for pagination. Keep in mind, this is not the template that we'll be using to display individual blog posts. In fact, to make a theme, you don't even necessarily need a single post template, but we'll get to that later. Right now, all we have is a basic HTML skeleton, and we're including the header and the footer using PHP. I should also mention that I've gone ahead into our WordPress administration and added some blog posts. For the sake of this exercise, my blog posts are just lorem ipsum text, but I strongly encourage you to create some actual blog posts or import blog posts from another blog so that you can see how your theme holds up to real content. In any case, you should make sure that you have at least two or three blog posts so that you know what your styling is looking like with multiple posts. To display all the blog posts, we're going to use the loop that I've been mentioning earlier in this chapter. So let's go ahead and add that in and then we'll go over it. So right after our content div here, I'm just going to open up PHP tags and I'm going to say while and then open up some parentheses and then say have posts and then the function the post. And then down here, just before we close our content div, we'll go ahead and open up PHP tags again, and we want to go ahead and end that loop, just like that. So the loop is contained inside of our content div. Essentially, the loop is pretty simple. This says that while there are posts in the database, continue looping through each one until we have none left. And then, of course, for each post, you want to do something or print something out. And then when we're all done, we go ahead and end the loop. And that's it. However, it's the part in between the loop that we're concerned with. To just display all of our blog posts is pretty easy. We just use the content function like this. So just after our h3, we're going to create a div and we'll give it the class entry content and we'll close that div and then inside of that div we're going to open up php tags again and we'll use the function the content just like that and when we switch over to the browser and refresh you can now see that it displays all of our blog posts now, this isn't great though because there's no title, there's no header, there's no author, or any kind of meta information about the post. Now, if you want to, you can have all the posts on your homepage just be an excerpt of the full blog posts. That way people won't be overwhelmed with information and they'll hopefully be encouraged to click through to read more. To do that, we need to switch back and we'll change the content to say the excerpt and when we switch back and refresh, you can see that we now just have a short portion of our blog posts. Of course, for this to work, you do need to manually create these excerpts for each one of your blog posts when you're writing or editing the post. Otherwise, the excerpt will just display the first 55 words of the post. But let's go ahead and change that back to the content. And there we go. Now let's go ahead and add a title. So inside of our h3, we're going to go ahead and add the class entry title. And then we're going to open up PHP tags and we're going to use the function the title. And let's also make the title link to our article. To do that, we need to wrap our text inside of an anchor tag. And this is going to link to the permalink, which will be for this post. 
And then we'll go ahead and close that anchor tag, and then we need the closing tag on the other side. And we'll save that out. And for you more advanced PHP users watching, notice that I'm not actually echoing these functions. Sometimes you do need to echo functions, but these will actually just print out automatically. So I just refresh the page, and there we have it. We now have a title for each one of our blog posts. Pretty nifty. So let's go ahead and add some author and date information. We're going to switch back to our text editor. And adding in author information is really easy. To do that, we're just going to go right above our content div here. And we're going to create a span tag, with the class entry author. And we'll close it. And then inside of that, again, we're going to open up PHP tags. And we're going to use the template tag, the author posts link and then when we switch back to the browser and refresh the page you can see that the author posts link function will link up the author name and when it's clicked it will just display posts written by that author of course all of the posts are written by the same author so you can't really see it in action here but trust me it works now let's go ahead and add in the date. So when we switch back to our text editor, we're just going to go ahead and add our date right after the author and right before the content. We'll open up a span tag and we'll give this the class entry date and close it. And then inside of our span tag, we'll use the template tag the date. And when we switch back and refresh, You'll notice that this is only displaying the date on one of our posts. It's not actually displaying on the rest of their posts. And that's okay, because if we have a group of posts that's all written on the same day, it'll actually just group them all together with a single date. You should now have a basic index file that's capable of displaying blog posts. In the next video, we'll get started on the CSS.